Hi guys, so today we're gonna do a read aloud and today we're looking at this book called The Push, a story of friendship. And it's written by Patrick Gray and illustrated by, or the illustrations, the drawings in the picture are drawn by Justin Skisak and Matt Wersak. So this is our story today. Now before reading this, I want to turn to the back of the book to show the blurb the little summary of what the story is about and then there's a little thing little bit about the author and the illustrator so it says that when marcus moved next door to john they knew instantly they would be friends now john and marcus do almost everything together they go on lots of adventures with marcus pushing john's wheelchair and john fueling their escapades with jokes through their friendship, the boys discover that their unique gifts make them stronger together. And then at the bottom, it says, based on the friendship of real life best friends, Patrick Gray and Justin Skisuk, the push teaches kids that people of all abilities have important roles to play and that we're all better together than we are on our own. So this is a story that is based on a real life friendship between Patrick and Justin. And it says here, Patrick Gray was inspired to write The Push, this story, after making the long trek or the long journey across the Camino de Santiago in Spain with his best friend, Justin, who is the illustrator. He hopes this story will inspire kids to develop deep, lifelong friendships that enrich their lives. So that's a little bit about our author, our, the writer of the book, and a little bit about Justin, the illustrator, Justin Skisuk has been a graphic designer and artist his entire adult life. However, his battle with a degenerative muscular disease has caused him to lose use of his hands. Justin now uses voice-controlled software to continue his artistic dreams. The images in this book were colorized by Justin himself. So this book, The Push, is based on the real-life friendship between Justin and and Patrick and I'll insert a picture right here so you guys can see their friendship and the story of Justin and Patrick is very interesting pa Justin is the one in the wheelchair and Patrick is the one who is pushing him and their story is really interesting because they went on a very long journey and it kind of inspired this story actually the journey they went on is called the Camino de Santiago and I'll insert a map right here that shows how long this journey is. So it starts somewhere in France and goes all the way to Spain. And you, it's a journey that you walk. So I believe it's about 500 miles walking altogether. So it takes about 25 to 30 days. And the journey is hard. It's not an easy journey. And Justin and Patrick's story is very inspiring and very amazing because Justin is in a wheelchair and Patrick was actually pushing him the entire journey. Patrick was pushing his wheelchair. They were pushing through to finish this journey together. So it is a very incredible story. Um, and it's a story about their friendship and how they were able to complete this really hard journey together by encouraging each other. Um, Patrick was pushing Justin and Justin was encouraging him by pushing him with his words, telling them they got this, they can do this. So, so that story is what inspired this book to be written by Patrick. So let's dive into this book and you will see the connection that this book has to their real life journey that they had as a friendship. So this is The Push, a story about friendship. In an ordinary town, in an ordinary house, there lived a boy named John. John slept in a bed like everyone else. He ate food like everyone else. He loved to play like everyone else, but he was different from the other kids in town. When John was born, his legs and arms didn't work. He couldn't do all the things his friends could do. He couldn't dress himself. He couldn't brush his teeth. He couldn't tie his shoes. He could not walk. When he wasn't sleeping, he was usually in his wheelchair. But there were some things John was an expert at. He could give any statistic about the Boston Red Sox since they got their nickname in 1908. He could make people laugh until milk came squirting out their noses, and he could solve the most complicated math problems in his head. One summer, just before school started, John saw a moving truck at the house next door. Would you please wheel me outside so I can see the new neighbors? John asked his mom. As his mom parked him at the end of the driveway, John saw a boy carrying a box. 
He was wearing a Red Sox hat. 2004, John shouted. The boy turned around. Sixth World Series title. And 11th American League pennant, John replied. The boy walked over to John. My name's Marcus. When Marcus stuck out his hand, John said with a smile, my hands don't work. That's okay, Marcus said, lifting John's hand. How about this? That will be our handshake, John said. In no time, Marcus and John were best friends. They were in the same class at school. When John wasn't helping Marcus with his math homework, they watched baseball games together or played chess. Marcus moved John's pieces for him, but John almost always won. Sometimes they explored the neighborhood with Marcus skateboarding behind John's wheelchair. So you can already see Marcus is always pushing John. So it's a little bit like the Patrick and Justin friendship. One day at recess, when the leaves were starting to crunch under John's wheelchair, their classmate Timothy handed out invitations to all the boys in the class. Marcus opened the envelope for John so he could read it. You're invited to my birthday party on Friday. Come to my house at 6 o'clock for pizza, cake, and ice cream. We should go, Marcus said. I'm not sure, John looked down. I can't feed myself. Marcus shook John's hand just like the first day they met. If you don't go, who will make us all laugh until our sides hurt? Besides, I can feed you. The day of the party when everyone was sitting down to eat, John said, Hey, want to hear a pizza joke? Yeah, everyone shouted. Ah, eh, never mind, John said. It's too cheesy. <laughs> Everybody laughed, and then Marcus held up a piece of pizza for John so he could take a bite. Every time John needed help eating, Marcus would feed him. One morning, a few days after winter break, John woke up and looked out his window. The hills around the town were covered with a fresh blanket of white. No school today. Within minutes, there was a knock on the door. John heard a familiar voice down the hall. Want to play in the snow? Marcus asked. Yeah, let's go sledding on the hill by the school. But it'll be a while before my mom can get me ready. That's okay, Marcus said. I'll do it. Great, John nodded at the closet. My coat is the green one. Got it. Gloves? Got it. Hat? Check. Okay, I think we're ready, John said. Hey, do you know what snowmen eat for breakfast? John asked as Marcus helped him into his wheelchair. Uh, I have no idea. Tell me. Frosted flakes. Marcus was grinning as they left the house. The trip to the hill was slow, but worth it. They spent the day zipping down on Marcus's sled and trudging up again until patches of grass dotted the white hill. Back at John's house, Marcus built a snowman in the front yard. What did one snowman say to the other snowman, John asked. Marcus smiled and shook his head. Tell me. John took a long sniff. Do you smell carrots? Marcus erupted in laughter. That's your best one yet. This is the best snow day yet, John said. Whenever John wanted to play in the snow, Marcus would dress him. One warm Saturday, the neighbor kids were outside playing baseball in the park. John kept the stats, and when they took a break between innings, Ben announced, Hey, we just got a new TV. Mom says we can have a movie night at my house. The boys buzzed with excitement. Ben had the best movie-watching room in town, complete with beanbag chairs and a popcorn machine. John looked at Marcus. Are you going? Only if you go. But they have all those stairs, John said. I'll carry you, Marcus said. That night, all the neighborhood boys gathered at Ben's house, including John. They watched the movie, ate popcorn, and talked about the lineup of Red Sox pitchers for the next season. Whenever Ben had a movie night, John would go and Marcus would carry him. At the end of the school year, the class planned a field trip to explore the hills behind the school. They were going to look at the trees, search for animals, and hike the trails. They'd finish the day by roasting marshmallows over a fire while they watched the sunset on the horizon. John looked at Marcus. I really want to go. Marcus smiled and said, I'll push you. The day of the hike, a light rain was falling. The ground squished under Marcus's feet and the wheels of John's wheelchair kept getting stuck in the mud. As Marcus cleared sticks and rocks from the path, a smile spread across John's face. How can you tell that a tree is a dogwood? I have no clue, Marcus said. By its bark. <laughs> As they trudged beside the stream, the ground got even soggier. You should keep going without me, John said. Then you can keep up with the rest of the group. Nah, we may be slow, but we're having more fun than everyone else. 
Several years later, the two boys hiked up the same hill behind the same school. They sat in the same spot and roasted marshmallows again, watching the same sunset behind the same horizon. Marcus put a marshmallow on his stick and inched it toward the fire. Want one? He asked. John nodded, but his mind was somewhere else. Hey, Marcus, why are you friends with me? I'm so different from everyone else. Marcus shot him a sideways grin. Yeah, I guess you're different. There's no one who can make me laugh like you do, or who has taught me more about math. There's no one I'd rather watch baseball with, or eat pizza with, or play in the snow with, or hike through the woods with. Should I keep going? I never thought about it that way, John said. But what about all the things I can't do? Marcus shrugged. I guess there are some things you can't do, but that goes for me too. I can barely draw a stick figure. I can't remember the punchlines to jokes. The only reason I passed math is because of your help, and I can't name half the roster for the Red Sox this year. That's not what I'm talking about, John said. What do you mean? Marcus asked. John turned to Marcus, and with a tear in his eye, he said, When I couldn't feed myself, you fed me. When I needed help getting ready, you dressed me. When I wanted to watch a movie with our friends but could, couldn't get down the steps, you carried me. And when I wanted to explore the hills with the rest of the class, you pushed me. You've been my hands and my feet for most of my life. I wish I could do that for you. A smile spread across Marcus's face. You have done something even greater for me. How? John shot him a confused look. When I fed you, you taught me how to take my time and how to be patient, Marcus said. When I dressed you, you showed me how I can help other people. When I carried you, you made me stronger so I could keep carrying you as we got older. And when I pushed you, you showed me how much joy there is in giving everything for someone else. I may have fed you, dressed you, carried you, and pushed you, but you have shown me how to laugh and how to live. Marcus took a bite of his gooey marshmallow. That's why we're friends, right? You're, we're stronger together than we are on our own. Yeah, but sometimes I wish we could switch places. I wish I could push you instead. You do, every single day. Marcus paused. I push you in your wheelchair, but you push me to be a better person. Marcus shook John's hand just the way he had on the first day they met, and they ate another marshmallow. So that is the story, The Push, a story of friendship by Patrick Gray. I really like this story because it's an amazing story about a friendship. And what's even more amazing is that it's based on the real life friendship of Patrick and Justin, who kind of portray the characters, Marcus and John, in our story. Remember I talked about how Justin and Patrick, they went on a very, very long journey and it was uphill, downhill, rain, mud, snow, whatever it may have been. 500 miles they traveled and um, Patrick pushed Justin the entire way and it's an incredible story of friendship. And I just want to point out that in this story too, they actually go through a lot of different seasons. They go through the first day of school after they meet. They go to school together and Marcus is pushing John. And then at school, uh, Marcus helps John because they go to the birthday party together and he feeds him. Marcus helps John get ready so that they can play in the snow together when the winter time comes. They play baseball together. And then in the summertime, they go on a hike up this hill together. And on this page, it says, the, a light rain was falling and the ground squished under Marcus's feet and the wheels of John's wheelchair kept getting stuck in the mud. But Marcus kept pushing John. They kept going and they made it all the way to the top together. So it is very similar to the real life story of the Camino de Santiago journey. So I really enjoy this story. I think it's an amazing story about friendship and it reminds us what, why it's so important to not only push someone physically, but also to push someone emotionally and what that means. Remember at the end of the book, Marcus lets John know, I push you in your wheelchair, but you push me to be a better person. And I think that's so true, you know, like this story is all about uh, um, our differences and everyone has different differences, but that's what makes us stronger together, right? So I love this story and that's The Push, A Story of Friendship by Patrick Gray.